Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. We were talking about platonic solids, remember? Last time we made icosahedron in several variations. If you missed it, the link is in the description. You will need to make one before you can make a star out of it. Because nothing says Christmas quite like a stellated icosahedron. Stellation is a process of extending the existing lines or planes until they cross again and form a star shape. I have wanted to make this shape ever since I got my first 3D pen. According to Wolfram Math World website, there are 59 possible variations of the stellation of icosahedron. And that's counting only the official so-called allowed ones. So there is plenty of fun to be had. Icosahedron is made of 20 equal lateral triangles and five of those meet at every corner or vertex. I am going to assume that you watched the previous video and made an icosahedron with the side of the triangle of two inches. So now we can just extend the resulting pentagon made wherever the five triangles meet out and put star point above each of those 20 triangles. Let's make the pattern. You can construct your five triangle pentagon. I am just going to use my nesting pentagon template from the 3D pen then Etsy store. By the way, that's a part of the polygon set. And transfer the two inch one to a new paper. So I can construct my star point off of it. going to add a middle line and some not allowed elements to it because a it will make it stronger and b it will make it more seasonal but you can definitely just stay with the minimalistic look if you are a purist measure the tip angle of our star. It looks like 35 degrees, which is a vital information because in either case, minimalistic or Christmassy, we will need to calculate the dihedral angle of the little triangular pyramids that will sit on the faces of our icosahedron. If you are a STEM teacher, you will probably delight at the opportunity to make your students actually do the math. But I am going to take a shortcut and have this handy dihedral angle calculator from the website headtoknow.org do it for me. All you need to do is to plug that 35 degree angle we just measured at the tip of the star spike into the calculator and fortunately all three sides are the same so we'll do it three times and voila the dihedral angle is 63 degrees more or less i will put this link in the description if you find the math too scary or just don't want to take the time And if I check it, looks like 63 degrees is right on. Now, armed with that piece of information, I can set my angle jig to 63 degrees. There is a video on how to make this contraption in the description. If you missed that episode. And while you watch that one, it will also refresh your memory on how to make acute angles which are harder to make because the sharper the corner, the harder it is to get in it with a pen. 
But as usual, there is a way around that problem. I will draw the right side of my spike first, leaving out the solid line on the left edge. And take it off. Then I will draw the left edge solid line and the center and all the branches again. And this time I will not take it off the surface before I attach the first two faces together. It is here that I need to create that 63 dihedral angle between the two planes. Another way to tell if you are doing that right is that the edge of the plane that will sit on the angle support will align with the central line that is on the work surface. Here is the counterintuitive part. When creating acute angles, the angle jig will have to sit on top of your design. So make sure all the lines that will end up under the jig are done beforehand. And we will work now just on the crucial corner line from the outside. As always, align and stabilize everything. I will join all the points of the design that need to meet up first. To make sure that part is done and stable, and then apply the joining corner line over it. Here is where you can see the alignment of the corner over the center of the opposite face. Now we can take it off. There should be just enough space left to fit in the third face. We have all the long edge lines already there, so as not to double them, we'll just draw the midline and the rest of the design of the third face and leave that stuck to your work surface to help you attach it to the rest of the shape. Starting with the tip, and then aligning all the rest of the design points, working either from the outside or even inside as the axis allows. All done, time to take it off. and repeat and repeat until you have a forest of 20 happy little trees. Then we'll need to grow a third hand or devise some other ingenious way to stabilize your icosahedron. These suction vices are usually pretty useless because they don't stay suctioned. But this is a light duty task and it will let me rotate the tile it sits on so I can reach all the sides easier. We will talk in a second about what to do if you don't have a waist like this one, or one at all. Now I will attach each little tree spike in the corners and middle of the sides to those 20 triangles on my icosahedron. Notice I didn't make a solid straight line on the bottom of the trees because the sides of the triangles are already there on the icosahedron. So you don't want them doubled. And the little branches are enough to keep the spikes all together without falling apart. If you 
are making the minimalistic version for geometric education only and not happy little trees, you may need to make at least one line on the bottom of the pyramid to reliably form it and then edit it out in the attaching process. If you don't have a suction vise, use what you have. Clips, pin it to the cork board with those big corsage pins, or pin it to a few layers of foam core, whatever will keep it steady enough to attach all 20 star points. Now the minimalistic version will be a bit less sturdy, but sturdy enough to sit on my own mathematical models shelf. However, I always wanted to make one of these sturdier ones for the top of my Christmas tree. So let's mount it on it. I will snip off the tippy top of one of those spikes to insert a wire in it and close it back up around it. On both sides. It won't stick to the wire so I will help it stick with a bit of green masking tape. There are all sorts of helpful plumbing fixtures in the hardware stores. So pick something appropriate to the size of your tree. I chose the smallest one and covered it with a green florist tape to make it somewhat invisible on my tree. And then just thread it on. But even just hanging, it will deck the halls quite nicely. So have a great holiday season. I hope you get a 3D pen.